everyone and welcome to my new series, The Science of Study. I'm going to be breaking things up into five videos, looking at all the best and most efficient ways, as proven by science, to help you get the job done. Some of you might already be knee deep in revision and others will be about to start. So I thought the best place to start is at the very beginning, with your study space. It shouldn't really come as much of a surprise that if you study in bed, you're just going to feel sleepy. And if you work on the sofa, you might also feel sleepy, but this is your area for relaxing, so you're just not gonna be that focused here. You want your desk to be somewhere you can go to every single day, because by doing this, you'll develop a habit, and this will eventually improve your concentration. But don't forget that your work environment should have a bit of personal flair. It's been proven that making decisions about the organization of your own space is empowering and this improves productivity. In 2010, a study in London found that workers given the opportunity to arrange an office with as many or as few plants and pictures as they wanted were 32% more productive than those who weren't. So take responsibility for your own workspace and make sure it's somewhere you feel comfortable and happy. However, there are a few rules to think about before you go turning your desk into a dream wilderness lodge. Maybe you could have a water feature an aquarium and then like a road bridge to go over to it. It could be in the back of the garden surrounded by this. Stop! We need to think about context-dependent learning. This is a psychological concept that's been around since the 1930s, and this is the gist of it. When a student is trying to recall information in an exam, they will recall it best if they learnt that information in an environment similar to the exam environment. Basically, if you're studying for exams, you might want to dial back your plans on that wilderness lodge because it's just not gonna help you remember all of those facts that you tried so hard to learn in the first place. Instead, have a think about the space you're going to be tested in and try to recreate that studious atmosphere at your desk at home. Well, just think, sat in eerie exam room silence, bathed in artificial light in a chilly school gymnasium. Is that really the best way to study? Well, not quite. Let's have a think about lighting. In a really interesting study by Mergin Mensch, he discovered that artificial lighting or poor lighting conditions are actually really detrimental to your work output. The study compared two groups of people. One group were exposed to natural daylight, the other group were exposed to artificial light. They discovered the group exposed to natural daylight not only preferred their working conditions, but were significantly more alert than the group exposed to artificial light, who were way sleepier. But why is this? Well, your body has a daily cycle, its circadian rhythm, and this is controlled by sunlight, the sun. So when the sun sets in the evening and it starts to get dark, this is a signal to your body to start producing a chemical called melatonin. And melatonin tells your body it's time to go to sleep. So the sun's going down, melatonin levels are rising. However, when the sun starts to come up and things get bright, your melatonin levels will decrease, telling you it's time to wake up. However, when you're surrounded by artificial light all the time, your melatonin gets really confused. You find it hard to sleep, meaning you're exhausted in the day. It's just not a great recipe for work. So at home, you want to be getting as much natural light as possible. If you can, put your desk by a window. If you can't do that, go outside and get some sunshine. If that's not possible, opt for some gentle artificial light, nothing that's gonna be glaring in your eyes and making you feel uncomfortable. So that's light. What about temperature? A study from Cornell University found that when office temperatures were low, 68 degrees, employees made 44% more mistakes than when the room was at optimal temperature, 77 degrees. Turns out if you're cold, it takes a substantial amount of energy just to keep you warm, which means there's less energy to go towards concentration. The solution? keep a jumper on you, or get one of those movable heaters so you can adjust the temperature to your liking. But careful not to make things too hot, because being too warm is as detrimental as being too cold, so it's all about balance. Finally, let's talk about sound. And if exam room conditions are the best way to study, then surely silence is the best way forward. Well, not necessarily. A few recent academic studies have championed classical music. It's speculated that the music puts students into a heightened state of emotion, which makes you more receptive to information. However, other research does suggest that when it comes to hard, focused revision, silence really is golden. Nicole Dodovich, an assistant professor of psychology at Trinity, conducted a study with a bunch of students. 
She asked students to categorise and make judgments on pictures of over 100 items. And when they had finished, she gave them a new set of pictures, but this time asked them to remember if they'd already seen any of them in the previous set. However, half the time the students were also asked to listen to rhythmic sounds. The results show that the students who were tested without musical distraction were more likely to remember information they'd already studied correctly. So when it comes to hard focus revision, I'm afraid that silence really is best. But if your own thoughts drive you bonkers, like mine do sometimes, then try a bit of chilled classical music. So you have your own space bathed in natural light in a quiet, cosy room. But there is one more thing. No matter how you organise your space, you want to make sure you have all of your materials to hand. I'm talking everything. Pens, pencils, notebooks, drinks, snacks, and more snacks. You don't want to give yourself any excuse to leave your desk because it's going to interrupt your concentration. And also, you want to remove distractions, and this includes your smartphone. Anything that's going to lead you down that road to procrastination. But more about this in my next episode. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed my science of study guide to your working environment. Leave me a comment and let me know what your workspace is like at home and tell everybody any tips that you might have. Subscribe for more episodes, stay curious, and I'll see you soon. Bye.